Thank you. Okay, so um, a very good evening to all of you. Um, first of all, I have to say thank you, uh, Rachel, um, for inviting me. Uh, for me, it's a really a wonderful opportunity um, to uh, give some information to uh, caregivers in Israel. Um, I think it's a very good and important opportunity. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, who I am and what I'm doing, and then I'll talk about your um, labor rights as employees. Um, and also, of course, uh, in the aspect of what's going on uh, today. Um, so uh, we'll talk about that. And as Rachel said, um, you're more than welcome to ask me questions. Um, I'm sorry if uh, I won't be seeing some of the questions uh, during um, um, during my uh, lecture, um, but please feel free to to ask or to raise a hand. Um, I want to say another word about this uh, opportunity. Um, I know that um, in the last uh, meetings uh, you had some uh, lectures from also from Moria and uh, other very uh, important and professional people. And um, I have to say, um, a really chapeau, uh, good work to uh, Rachel and Talia. Uh, I think you're doing a very important job um, for, with, with bringing information, which I think is one of uh, the most important thing for every human being, especially uh, when you're not in your uh, uh, home in your personal home. So thank you so much for that. Um, I heard some of the lectures, they were fantastic, really amazing people. So uh, thank you for that also from me. Shiri, I just will add that this all initiative uh, was conducted and initiated by, uh, I will say it in Hebrew, Rashuta Ochlusin Vagira, Misrada Reviva, Eshel, Amutat Simi, so uh, this is the opportunity to say thank you for all the partners uh, that are in this uh, great initiative. Great. So really, uh, thank you so much. Um, and, and thank you for being oriented to that. It's, uh, you know, it's not, um, it's not clear um, to do that. And so again, thank you so much for that. Um, so let's start <laughs> without further ado. So just, you know, I wanted to um, uh, let you uh, understand that uh, foreign workers in Israel um, are not just caregivers, as you know, and uh, maybe uh, if you uh, watched a little bit the news you saw, of course, uh, since uh, October 7th, uh, that we are talking about uh, foreign um, uh, employees also in agriculture, in construction, uh, there are some sectors in Israel where we can see foreign workers, but uh, the main uh, number, the, the big number uh, of foreign workers are in the caregiving sector, which is actually uh, growing, um, you can say day by day. Um, there are a lot of uh, elderly in Israel, and a lot of them are in need of caregiving, of a daily, uh, daily basis caregiving. Um, and so uh, because <clears throat> we can not see a lot of Israelis uh, doing that job, um, we, we are asking for uh, foreign workers to come and uh, work in Israel. And so um, it's a very, very important uh, work uh, because it's with the elderly, which uh, we as Israelis uh, are seeing as, uh, you know, very um um, uh, people that we want to take a lot of care um, because they took care of us as uh, we were children. And so this is, again, an opportunity, as I said before, to say thank you um, to all of you uh, that you are doing uh, for us a very, very important uh, work uh, taking care of our elderly. So um, as of uh, 2022, we can see that there are... Um, more than 60,000 uh, foreign caregivers in Israel uh, coming from uh, a lot of places, um, mostly from the Philippines, but not only, also uh, from uh, Moldova and from Uzbekistan. Um, and uh, there are um, 
probably coming also from India and Sri Lanka. Um, so uh, we can see a diversity of caregivers. Um, however, when we are talking about the uh, labor relationships, uh, the rule is that the Israeli law applies on everybody, regardless of their nationality. So it doesn't matter if you are Israeli or Filipino or Uzbeki, it doesn't matter. Um, you are uh, you have the right as an employee uh, to be treated as uh, every other human being uh, regarding the labor laws in Israel. I have to say that usually um, the laws in Israel are also uh, a bit more protective uh, of the foreign workers, uh, seeing them as uh, as a community that needs actually more help than the native ones because they are foreigners, because um, they understand less the rules in Israel. Uh, and we will see that as we go along uh, with my lecture. Um, you said before, Rachel, you talked about Rashut HaOchlusin, which is uh, PIBA, the Population and Immigration Office or Authority, um, which is the main office, the main governmental office that is in charge of your uh, permits, of your uh, visa, of all the regulations considering the working in Israel and then also leaving Israel if it's uh, just for a, a vacation or for uh, uh, permanently. Um, so they are regulating actually uh, the uh, coming and going uh, to and from Israel. Um, the Ministry of Labor, which is uh, the office where I'm working, uh, is in charge of working relationship. And we are not uh, um, addressing the nationality, as I said, of the worker, just understanding in what sector uh, this uh, person is working. Okay, so this is what guides us. Um, now, I am the Commissioner for Foreign Workers Labor Rights. It's actually a pretty unique office. Um, which uh, is not very common in the world. Um, and this is also, um, the office is also um, made out of the understanding that foreign workers need uh, a specific and special address um, to um, enforce their rights. Um, so this is me. Uh, and uh, um, I would uh, show you uh, the rest of the team, um, but uh, maybe in a different opportunity. And um, sorry, and um, if uh, if I want to talk about the vision of our unit, uh, what I say is our campus um, is that we see uh, the foreign workers and uh, not as a means or not as a um, a cheap uh, a working uh, force, but rather as someone that we are obligated to make sure that they feel safe and right here in Israel doing any kind of job. But I think it's uh, especially, as I said before, in the caregiving sector, which we see as a very uh, special kind of work. Um, here you can see the different kind of uh, uh, queries that we are getting from, uh, from all workers. Uh, of course, uh, for me, it's much uh, easier to uh, speak in English, but we are getting uh, queries from uh, any kind of foreign worker, even in Thai uh, or Swahili. Um, so here you can see that we are getting a lot of uh, queries regarding general information about labor rights, about social benefits, uh, what to do uh, when resigning, um, Am I entitled to pension compensation and things like that? Um, so uh, after, um, uh, in the end of the lecture, I will show you uh, how you can uh, apply to us in different kinds of uh, ways. Um, and you're more than welcome to use all our um, information channels uh, and uh, ask us questions. I think also for today, of course, as I said, you are more than welcome to, to raise um, questions, uh, but I think it would be better if uh, you want to uh, have a, a private consultation, not to do it today, uh, you know, for uh, privacy uh, issues. 
Um, so in the end, I will give you, of course, all the ways to uh, get in touch with us. Um, and of course, in WhatsApp, uh, email, and uh, we have also uh, Facebook, uh, which is a page that we're usually posting uh, once a week. Uh, a post in general with general information that might might be of interest to you. Um, some of the information might be also in Hebrew, um, maybe for your employers, because, you know, sometimes the employers don't have the right information and they can also, of course, use this website um, for, for their own uh, um, knowledge. So what happens when we get a query? Uh, we receive it uh, through, as I said, WhatsApp or phone uh, or email, and we review it. We uh, first check if this is something that uh, we can give information, because uh, if it's a question regarding visa, usually uh, we uh, ask you to, to address uh, PIBA, the Population and Immigration Office. Um, and if it's uh, a query that we can only give you know, information uh, over the phone, um, or write it on the WhatsApp, it's very easy. If it's something a little bit more complicated or in need of our, um, uh, and, and some kind of activity from us, uh, then of course uh, we explain to you what we can do, uh, what we cannot do. Um, usually we are not going uh, to court, but um, we can uh, tell you um, understanding the query, if it's something that we think you should go to court with. Um, so it really depends upon uh, um, the circumstances of the specific query or case, but you're always welcome to consult with us. Okay, this is, I think the key sentence. Uh, if you have a question, just ask. Um, the, the service is free of charge. We are uh, the government uh, ministry, uh, in the government of Israel, it's free of charge. Uh, you will not pay anything. Uh, the only thing is that uh, you will uh, um, maybe um, waste your time. Usually you don't, because usually I think we have uh, um, relevant information for you. Um, also, I just wanted to add that um, we are doing a lot of work, which is not just legal work or not just you know answering the queries where um, also, uh, sometimes meeting uh, with uh, foreign workers in different kind of situations. Uh, today, I think it's a good explanation for uh, the kind of activity that we are doing. We are publishing a lot of information that can uh, be of use to you. Uh, we're taking part in different kind of uh, regulations um, that apply on uh, foreign workers. And of course, we uh, endorse the um, uh, bilateral agreements, the uh, agreements uh, between Israel and other governments in order that you as foreign workers will be able to know and understand and enforce, uh, self-enforce uh, uh, your rights. Um, so this, this is uh, the kind of work that we are doing. And also uh, here you can uh, see some examples of the things that we are doing. Uh, and also I wanted to uh, uh, show you that we're doing um, some uh, activities which uh, are not always are, um, um, not, they don't always come from us. It's not only our initiative. Sometimes uh, people uh, share with us their thoughts and we think that, um, oh, wow, this is a good idea. Maybe uh, we can do something with that. And I think here you can see, um, the examples uh, during the COVID where uh, we heard um, a lot of Filipino workers saying, you know, we, we just want to share our thoughts. And we made a short video um, to, to share uh, your thoughts and ideas and, and maybe fears also. Um, and these videos uh, were also shown in the Knesset, in the Israeli uh, parliament. Um, and I think these are um, very, very important projects in order to raise awareness um, regarding your very special work and the time that you are here in Israel. So just that you know that you have uh, um, a ministry to, to share it with. And here, uh, this is something very updated and um, that uh, um, a short video 
that we did with uh, Piba. Yeah, you know Moria by now. Um, she also uh, gave some lectures in this uh, project. And you see also um, an officer uh, from the military explaining um, a few days after the war started um, how to act in emergency situations, uh, what to do uh, with your elderly when, when there is an alarm and you don't uh, always have a safe place and how to react to um, elderly that are scared and sometimes uh, don't understand the situation and um, they don't want to go to a safe room and um, things like that. And I talked about uh, what to do regarding um, if you want to go uh, back to your family in your uh, own country for some time, and how it uh, affects your working relations, uh, what to do, um, how to do it right and not just, you know, take your bag and leave because uh, this could be problematic. So um, as it says here, we are placing a lot of uh, uh, emphasis on your welfare and we really want to uh, um, give you um, as people, as uh, individuals, um, the right care. Um, and not just, you know, um, to give you uh, uh, the laws and rules that apply. We really understand um, the complexity of your work. So uh, this was just, you know, uh, a starter. Um, and now I think maybe uh, we can uh, dive a little bit to uh, the information that I think uh, would be of interest to you. Um, these things you, you can, of course, uh, um, take pictures or I know it's recorded so you can see it later on. But if you have any questions, you can always uh, ask us or go to our website and you will see all this information. Um, and um, it, it's always uh, there for you. So uh, don't uh, feel um, that you're, you are uh, under some stress to, to write everything. Uh, this information uh, is always for you to, to share. So I thought um, the basic thing is to start with uh, the minimum wage, um, which is uh, since April 2023, uh, 5,571 uh, new Israeli shekel. Uh, it rose from uh, 5,300. Um, so you, you were supposed to see it uh, since uh, uh, the payment of May 2023. Uh, I have to say that um, a lot of people asked us if the minimum wage uh, got uh, higher in 200 shekels. So am I entitled to get a raise um, if my uh, salary is, for example, 6,000? The answer is no, um, this applies on the minimum wage. So everyone, every worker that were, was paid 5,300 shekel as a base uh, salary, uh, his salary was uh, um, got a raise of uh, 271 shekel, but it wasn't just you know a, a raise um, in itself. And this is uh, something that I know uh, a lot of people asked us. Uh, also, another question that we're getting from uh, a lot of people is uh, pocket money. Um, I have to say that there is no basis, there is no legal basis for pocket money. I don't know uh, how it started. I know it's something that uh, is going uh, from uh, mouth to ear, as we say in Israel. Um, but but we, we cannot, uh, I, I cannot show you a legal basis for that. So uh, when you're working for someone, you have to understand if this pocket money that you're getting each and every week, if it's uh, an uh, advance uh, for the uh, monthly payment or if it's an extra payment, uh, you should ask that. And you should ask that in advance. Um, and I think also maybe something that I didn't say uh, um, in front Everything that you come to an agreement with your uh, employer, usually it's supposed to be in writing. Uh, and I think writing is the best way because then there are no um, misunderstanding or there are not supposed to be any misunderstanding because everything you know is written and you can always go back to the contract and uh, look uh, what you agreed upon. And this applies for you as a worker and for an employer as well, of course. 
So the best way is to write everything in the contract. But if you didn't write it, uh, it doesn't say that you didn't agree about it. The importance is to agree about everything in the starting uh, point of your relationship, not uh, um, not to agree it after, uh, um, not after a, a year, of course, but also I think not even after a month. You should, prior to starting, um, explain to your employer what your um, what you you uh, expect from the work and what your uh, wage expectations are. And um, ask your employer what his expectations are. And if you say everything up front, um, there's, there are not supposed to be any misunderstanding later on. I think um, this is a, a very important rule that applies for you and for your employer as well. Now, um, about the uh, wage, there are some optional reductions that the employer is entitled to um, reduct from your salary. Um, and, he, and the employer is uh, entitled to uh, um, these reductions only to the ones that are shown here. He cannot uh, deduct anything uh, other than that because there are very specific and harsh rules regarding what uh, is deductible and what not. So, for example, uh, the employer can deduct for residence. Um, maybe I'll show you here. Um, and this is uh, um, the, uh, on a base of uh, Israeli rules, how much the employer can deduct for residence um, for, for housing, okay? You're, um, uh, of course, working in the employer's house. However, you are getting housing services and for this, uh, the employer is entitled to ask you um, to, to take part um, uh, according to these amounts. And of course, he can uh, say that he would uh, like to deduct less, but he cannot deduct more than what is shown here. So this is about residents. Um, and there is also an entitlement to uh, a deduction of uh, additional living expenses, um, and here you can see the maximum amount for that. It's for uh, electricity and water and um, um, taxes um, that, uh, that uh, apply on housing. Uh, also, the employer uh, can ask you to take part in the health insurance, which is actually very expensive, um, you should know. So um, he, uh, the employer is not entitled to deduct more than uh, half of the uh, amount of the um, health insurance and uh, of course not more than uh, 154 shekel. And also the last thing is that the employer can tell you that he uh, would like uh, to deduct some of your um, salary for food expenses. Uh, however, it cannot be more than 10% of the minimum wage. So it cannot be more than uh, 557 shekel per month, okay? Now here, uh, I did an example. I'm sorry, uh, I forgot to uh, change it to the um, updated minimum wage. I'm sorry for that. Um, but you can uh, see here an example of uh, how, uh, how the, the net uh, wage looks like. For example, if uh, the worker um, agree to get uh, the minimum wage, we, which was uh, until April um, 23 was uh, 5,300 shekels. And if the employer uh, decided to deduct uh, some of the living uh, deductions, uh, expenses, sorry, and health insurance and so on and so forth. And also you agreed that the pocket money uh, is an advance on, on your salary. So actually, your net salary would be 4,463 shekels. And this is fine. This is not against the minimum wage uh, law, okay? Um, because sometimes we got questions about, uh, I'm getting only uh, 4,800 shekel. How is this uh, legal? 
uh, if it's not the minimum wage. So here we show you how it actually uh, complies with the rules. Okay, I see there is a um, raised hand here. Um, someone uh, named Zoom user. <laughs> Would you like to ask something? Okay, so uh, if not, then we'll continue. Uh, Shiri, there is a question in the chat. Okay. So if you wanted to make a pause sure. and, and ask and uh, see it, or I will uh, read it to you. Uh, um, I want to ask about the annual vacation leave. Yeah. Okay, you can see the chat. I, I, I just ask? no, I I just see. So that I will I will read it to you. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, I want to ask about the annual vacation leave. If you will go on a vacation leave, it is still paid or no? Because most of the employers, uh, if you will go out on that days, they will not pay you. And if you stay, then they will give you the 14 days vacation leave. Okay, so we'll talk about the annual leave, uh, leave in, in two to three minutes, okay? If it's okay, uh, let's wait with that. Um, just a second. Okay, so before we're talking about the annual leave, just to um uh, talk about the the very basics uh, of your employment. Okay, so um, as you probably know, you are here uh, to work with uh, the uh, patient. What we are talking about the patient, the employer, the elderly, um, actually all day long. So according to the Supreme Court ruling, uh, the uh, hours and rest uh, day law uh, do not apply on the um, home-based caregiving sector. It's not that it doesn't apply on foreign workers. It would not apply also on an Israeli worker in this specific sector, okay? So I know that there are a lot of uh, workers asking me about a two hours uh, recess or things like that. There is no legal basis for that. Um, the worker is supposed to be with the elderly during the week and um, uh, help him um, actually all day long, of course, with um, uh, recesses during that. And also, of course, we ask the employers to give uh, um, enough uh, time to uh, get a good sleep and to take to take care of the welfare of the of the worker of course um but you have to understand that uh, this is the uh, job requisition that you would be there for the elderly uh, however the supreme court said that the worker are entitled uh, to one uh, day to one rest day um and you have to make sure uh, upfront with your employer, which would be this rest day. And it's supposed to be either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, okay? Um, so come to an agreement with that. Another question is, uh, when does it start? When does it end? So it actually, the rest day is supposed to be of at least 25 consecutive hours. So if you are uh, going out on, uh, let's say, Friday at 2 o'clock, you're supposed to come back on Saturday at 3. And um, you're supposed to uh, find a solution for uh, transportation uh, for that. Um, so please understand that uh, if you're telling your employer, uh, I cannot come at 3 o'clock because there is no transportation, you have to figure out a different kind of solution, okay? or maybe change the day. Um, but it is important, and uh, we are talking about that a lot with uh, foreign caregivers. Please don't work all the rest days. Please, it's a, a very important for your uh, mental health that you take the rest day, um, you know, to, to, uh, to rest or to uh, meet friends, uh, or, you know, just to do things that you like without being in the same uh, place all the time. Uh, I think it's very important for your mental health. Um, but if you are needed in the working place or you uh, stayed, uh, um, th there was a need for you to stay during the rest day, you are entitled to an extra payment. And this is uh, um, computed 
according to your salary. So uh, you are entitled to a payment of 150% of your regular salary, okay? Which if we take the minimum wage, comes to another 380 shekel per uh, working during the rest day, okay? I hope this was uh, um, not too uh, complicated. So uh, about the annual vacation, which has nothing to do with the weekly rest day, okay? Sometimes people uh, mix it together. Um, the rest day doesn't have to do anything with the annual leave. Now, um, every worker is entitled to 14 working uh, um, paid, sorry, to uh, 14 paid vacation days um, annually. And you can accumulate only up to two years of vacation days, okay? This is something that is very important for you to know. So actually, if you're working for your employer and you didn't take any annual leave after the first or the second year, you have to take uh, those 28 accumulated days uh, at your at the third year. It's very important. Otherwise, you might forfeit them. Um, it's not just, you know, uh, deleted uh, from your rights. It's something that is a little bit more complex. However, uh, you might forfeit them if you're not using them uh, on the third year. So this is very important. Now, those days are not uh, um, days that you're not supposed to get uh, paid for. Those are paid vacation days, not uh, regarding the weekly rest day. So uh, if you are going on vacation or you are using one of those days, you're supposed to get uh, your regular salary. There is not supposed to be any deduction because you didn't work during uh, the vacation. And uh, I hope this uh, is an answer to uh, the questions to the question in the chat. So, if, for example, you went on your uh, vacation to the Philippines, you wanted to see your family, which is very understandable. And let's say uh, you had only fourteen days accumulated uh, uh, for your vac annual vacation, um, the, and you wanted to go for uh, a month, not just fourteen days. So you will be paid for the 14 days. You will not be paid for the rest of the month, which is um, uh, not a paid uh, absence. Um, this is an absence which is not uh, enti doesn't entitle you to uh, a payment. Um, so you have to take it, of course, into consideration. Now, um, you can take some of the days, you know, uh, like um, decide that you want to take uh, a day off um, to to see a friend uh, that lives not in Israel, uh, sorry, not in the city where you're working in. Or uh, I don't know, just, you know, taking a day off, which doesn't have to do anything with the rest day. Uh, this is fine. Um, you can do that. Um but you have to make sure that this is scheduled with your employer. Also, uh, the longer days of vacation, you have to make sure that you schedule it with your employer. You cannot just say, uh, tomorrow I'm on vacation. Um, you have to make sure that uh, the employer knows that and you know takes uh, every uh, uh, kind of means necessary to find a replacement. Uh, the replacement is not on you. This is also an important point. I know about a lot of employers uh, saying that uh, if you want to take uh, your annual leave, you have to find a replacement. Otherwise, you cannot go. Um, this is not legal. Um, it's not on you to find the replacement. Of course, uh, um, the agency, the private agency, the private bureau is supposed to uh, help the employer. Uh, of course, you can help the employer in finding a replacement. That's fine but they cannot uh, uh, tell you that you cannot go to a vacation because there is no replacement, okay? Um, Rachel, are you uh, seeing any questions, um, any new questions about that? Uh, no, 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 there's no Great. question. There are no questions in the chat. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm moving forward. I want to uh, stay in our time frame. Um, 
Another right that you have uh, regarding absence is a uh, holiday. Every uh, worker in Israel, again, regardless of their nationality, um, is entitled to nine days uh, of holiday. Um, again, here, you have to say upfront if you want to uh, use the uh, Jewish holidays or your uh, uh, own religious holidays. And then if you have more than nine holidays, um, in your religion, you have to specify to your employer which of your holidays, only nine holidays, uh, you would like to use and write also their dates um, so that the employer knows uh, when you're uh, probably not going to uh, be uh, working. And these are also paid um, absence days. Um, but if you are needed to work, if you uh, would like, uh, if the employer asks you to work during these holidays and you're fine with that, uh, then again, like Shabbat, like the rest day, you're entitled to uh, an extra payment for that. Um, again, if we're using the example of the um, minimum wage, then you're entitled to um, another payment of 380 shekel for that. The holiday, like the rest day, is of uh, 25 consecutive hours. And uh, as it says here, um, if the uh, holiday uh, is uh, during your uh, rest day, let's say it's uh, um, Shabbat and the holiday is on Shabbat, then you cannot, and you're working during that day, you're not entitled to a double payment. You're not entitled to get 380 shekels times two just the one payment, okay? Uh, these are answers uh, on the basis of the questions that we are getting usually uh, from workers. So there is a, a comment here, okay? It's a, how about if you are working with your employer from Sunday to Saturday? No day off uh, ever since uh, I started working with her. Does it have an effect uh, on the annual vacation days uh, uh, which she cannot use? also okay so first of all um i i want to divide my answer uh in into two um if you're not using your rest day because uh you want to uh um leverage your uh, wage uh, leverage your salary uh, i totally understand that but i uh I really ask you not to do that please take rest days they are like i said before very very important for your mental health um so uh please uh, take that into consideration and also if this is a requirement for your employer um him or his family is asking you to stay all the rest day um i would say the same explain to them that you need at least two times a month, at least a day off, because, you know, you, you need to uh, re-energize and uh, so that they should take a replacement or, or find a different kind of solution for that. It's very important. So um, I'm emphasizing that and I'm sorry I'm repeating that, but I, I think it's really important for you. Um, now, the uh, other um, half of the answer is that um, the rest day doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with your vaca annual vacation, nothing. It's something totally different. You cannot use the one uh, on, the, on top of the other, okay? The rest day is a basic uh, right that every person in Israel has uh, in order that they don't work all the time around the clock. And the annual leave, is another right that an, every worker has uh, so that they can take a longer time, not just the uh, weekly rest day, a longer period of time uh, as a vacation. So uh, the one doesn't affect the other in any kind of way, okay? Just look at them as a different kind of right that you have. Okay, is, is uh, this understood? I hope they will write down if it's understood. The, the name is Lot. So Lot, if you, it's okay, so write it down. Uh, another question is, uh, good evening, this coming February, 
2024, I will be three years working here my, with my employer. I didn't use my annual leave. Uh, as you said, it will be uh, forfeited uh, if I will not uh, use it. Thank you. Yes. So again, uh, it might be forfeited. Um, usually uh, what I'm explaining to employers and to the workers that it's uh, not uh, that uh, as an employer, you can tell you, uh, the worker, uh, okay, uh, now it's uh, three years, you uh, um, your annual leave days are uh, deleted and uh, you lost your right. It, it's not that simple. Um, the employer has to um, make sure that the worker knows that uh, it's already three years and that the first two years of annual leave were not used and he might uh, forfeit them if he's not going to use them. And he has to make sure that the worker has an opportunity to actually use those uh, uh, days. And if after um, uh, some reminders, the worker doesn't use those, those days for any kind of reason, then he would forfeit those days. So, um, you have to make sure if it's uh, going to be uh, uh, on February that you um, tell your employer, listen, uh, I will take my uh, um, annual uh, leave days, um, but uh, I'm not taking them on February. I would like to use them, let's say, um, on April or May. Um, and then it's not forfeited. You uh, declare that you are going to use them and use them uh, during uh, this upcoming year, and that's, that's fine. It's not that um, your entitlement ends on February, okay? But you have to make sure that you tell your employer that you are going to use those uh, vacation days in, during the next months, okay? So in order that you do not uh, um, forfeit them, okay? Okay, so I will continue. So first, first of all, Lot uh, uh, says thank you for the clarification. So it's okay. And uh, another question is uh, when is the time to mark a one year in my employer uh, from a start uh, 12 days or from uh, the day I signed the contract? Uh, so the working um, uh, start the work, working relationship starts when you start working. Okay, so if you were on a, a trial uh, period, let's say, and um, the both of you uh, um, signed the agreement after a week, um, you actually started your working relationship the day you started the work. Okay, so uh, just to make uh, clear, if you started uh, your um, um, experiencing period on the 1st of January, but you sign the contract on the 7th of January, then the working relationship starts on the 1st of January, not on the uh, day you um, sign the contract, okay? I see uh, more chats. I just see the number of the chats. I okay. don't see- uh... Okay, it's okay. I will uh, read it. So right. thank you, uh, first of all, thank you for the- last day uh, for your last answer the uh, next uh, question is uh, if i take my vacation i'm required to find my reliever or the agency will find it uh, if we will find for it some agency requires the caregiver to find reliever before take the vacation uh, to them and thank you for the other uh, answer okay Okay, so uh, I think I mentioned that before. Um, it's, of course, uh, better if you find a reliever because it makes everything easier, but it's not your duty and the employer cannot demand you to find a reliever in order to uh, go for vacation and uh, the private agency um, cannot demand it as well. This is actually their job to find a reliever. Um, however, um, you know, there are always the um, legal situation and uh, the life itself, okay, the everyday life. So, you know, the rules can say uh, A and B and C and D, but uh, then 
if you if there is no reliever and you really want to go on vacation and the employer says what can I do so of course if you help him uh, it's great um, it serves both of you but it cannot be uh, your duty okay okay so uh, moving forward um, and this is something um, that was, you know, uh, mentioned a lot uh, during uh, this emergency times, uh, the time of war, uh, because there are a lot of people uh, afraid, not uh, just foreign workers, of course, Israelis as well. Um, and uh, foreign workers, uh, they had uh, the opportunity not to stay in Israel. And so uh, a lot of them, uh, and this was, of course, very understandable, wanted to go back to their uh, home country. Um, but um, you cannot just, you know, leave your employer. Actually, you cannot leave any employer just from uh, here to now. But this uh, is even, uh, it has a much uh, larger impact when we're talking about the caregiving sectors, because we're talking about people um, they that can usually not stay on their own. So um, you have to give prior notice in any kind of situation, okay? And it's very, very important to do that. Um, it's not just a legal uh, demand. I think it's also um, a human demand not to leave uh, a person with a disability on his own. Uh, so here you can see that... Um, uh, the uh, period of time for the prior notice depends upon uh, how much, uh, I'm sorry, how long you're working for your employer. Um, so if you're work here, working for uh, um, a few days or just for a month, you still have to give a prior notice of at least seven days. It's very important. Um, we had a lot of... Uh, um, uh, queries from people that you know came to Israel uh, to work in caregiving and after uh, one or two days said okay um, I don't feel right here I want to go um, it's it's something that of course um, uh, cannot be understandable um, usually um, you have to give a chance to see if uh, um, the place is really right for you and, and in caregiving in the home-based caregiving which is a very intimate kind of work, um, you cannot really know that after a day or two. Uh, and in my opinion, sometimes not even after a week, you have to give it um, a longer period of time to understand if this working place is right for you or not. But in any case, you are obliged to give at least seven days of prior notice before you resign. Now, um, the employer, He's also, he also has the right to terminate the employment and he's also uh, obligated to give you prior notice. Um, but um, uh, the periods are a little bit different because um, the employer after the first um, month or even up to six months um, can tell you um, to leave after a shorter period. However, they are demanded to let you stay um, in their uh, house uh, for another uh, seven days until you find a different uh, place to, to work for or a different uh, housing um, solution. Uh, okay, so uh, you're, if, if you don't have a place to uh, go to and you need those days, um, you can stay at the uh, house of the employer, of course, uh, um, doing uh, any kind of agreement with him, but they cannot just tell you, take your bags and leave. This is something that is, of course, illegal. Um, any questions regarding the prior notice? Um, I will see. I'm not sure that it's about it, but I will ask. I will see what's in it. Uh, Maria asks, likewise, I will tell to my employer that I will also use my annual leave on December, January 2025. I will be three years on August 2024. I'm not sure that I understood that. I will also be like that, as you mentioned with her inquiry. 
Did you understand the question? I think I yeah. think I did. I think okay. I did. Um, so it's uh, like I said before, um, you have to tell your employer, I know that there are days that I'm supposed to use and I do not want to forfeit them. So I will be using them, uh, but it should be in the uh, at least uh, during 2024, even December. I think that January 2025 is a bit problematic. Of course, if the employer agrees, then then there is no um, problem. Uh, he can agree that uh, you will use it on January 2025. Um, uh, the law doesn't uh, say anything about that, and uh, the both of you can agree. There is no problem. But if he doesn't agree, um, then you should use it uh, by 2024, uh, even if it's December. Okay? Okay. So I have two friends in different agencies, and they went together to have a vacation for a month. My one friend signed her daily timesheet for the whole month, while my other friend didn't allow by her agency uh, by urgency to sign the whole month, except the time she is still here, the same time of vacation, but different agency. Is it depends on agency? Does it depend on agency? Okay, so um, maybe um, because because we had a very um, limited time frame, I didn't want to get into uh, a lot of issues that concern um, caregivers. Um, so I, I rushed a little bit and, uh, I don't know, Rachel, maybe, uh, in the next, uh, uh, um, project, um, uh, we'll think about, uh, maybe, um, talking about more issues, but just here to answer your question, um, the agency, uh, is not an employer. Okay. Uh, and they can, they cannot be employers. And there, is, there are not supposed to be any differences between the agencies regarding your rights. Of course, you know, like in any uh, kind of uh, um, sector, um, the services might be different, the people are different, but the legal basis is not different. And there should not be any differences between the agencies. Now, um, there are um, issues regarding the question if the employer uh, involves also um, a nursing company, uh, as uh, it's used to say, um, then, then it, the, the rules might be a bit different, but not, uh, um, not mainly different. And again, the agencies uh, are not supposed to give a different uh, um, uh, regulations to the workers. Um, these are issues that you're supposed to be um, talking to with your employer and come to an understanding with your employer. And the agency is supposed to uh, be like a mediator. Uh, They're supposed to be neutral and help you as well as your employer. They're not supposed to um, be subjective to not to the uh, workers and not to the employers, they're supposed to help the both of you man maintain um, a good relationship between you and your employer. Um, so I'm, I don't understand why they said that. Uh, but as I said in the beginning, um, specific uh, private issues, uh, you can uh, later on write to me on the WhatsApp. Uh, of course, I will not be seeing it today. Uh, but write to me on the WhatsApp um, and uh, I'll try to understand and to uh, help you if I can. And maybe okay. I'll just go yeah. to the... Um... Yeah, I, I will say that there are other questions. And I'm I, sure, I'm just, um, I just I wanted to... I on the chat. Okay, I just say that I wrote on the chat a link to a, a WhatsApp group that we opened a couple of uh, weeks or a couple of weeks ago and uh, people can ask their uh, questions. But if you, they can ask you uh, in the WhatsApp that uh, you will uh, write, mm -hmm. so uh, it's okay. So because there are another other questions, and we have to to wrap up. Yeah, and... sure. Oh okay. wow, I didn't look at this. <laughs> um, I just uh, will say, Rachel, that um, if you see on the WhatsApp group that you uh, there are some questions that are general questions, right, and and that people, you know, uh, it it, it um, affects a lot of people then please uh, uh, write to me and okay. I will uh, give you the answer and you can forward it. Okay, okay. 
So you want uh, so uh, yeah, maybe, sure. I, I will I will one, take um, one more question. Yeah, one sure. more question maybe and uh, sure. uh, hello ma'am. I have a question about my benefits. I already resigned last October 31st and until one and until now, what will I do? Because my employer uh, always saying that they will give, but until now they didn't give. So okay. what did they didn't give? Um, so um, usually um, when you, when there is a termination of employment, uh, it doesn't matter if it's uh, because you decided the termination or your employer decided it. Um, in the end of the employment, you should get uh, your computation. And it's not supposed to take more than 14 days to compute all your rights and to be paid for them. Um, and if uh, you uh, terminated on October 31st, uh, 31, sorry, and it's already uh, December, um, you should have been paid. Now, you have to understand that um, nowadays we are addressing these uh, issues a bit differently because sometimes because of the war, uh, people need more time uh to to um make sure that they are paying uh, what they need to um but i i will be asking you to write to me uh, in order that i understand if uh your employer is not paying because uh, of uh, the war uh, situation or uh, other issues i don't know uh, um what's behind that but i would uh, of course be uh, more than willing to help you to try to understand uh, why you're not getting paid, you should be getting paid by now. Okay, and the last question is, uh, if I'm working here in Israel for seven years, can I resign, of course, with a valid reason? Can I still have a spatial visa? Is it true that I have to work with the 188% disability? I just want a clarification from this, uh, from my part. Sure. Uh, thanks, then, and God bless, um... God bless you too. <laughs> then uh, um, yes, this is again a question uh, that should be uh, answered by PIBA, the Population and Immigration Authority, because uh, this is uh, their mandate. But I will tell you that uh, this is correct um, because the legal uh, time frame for foreign workers is 53 months and seven years uh, is already after that period of time. And so the regulations in Israel are... Um, uh, letting foreign workers to stay longer, but only for um, people with uh, a higher percentage of disability. Um, what you mentioned is 188% uh, disability. It, this is correct. Um, so uh, so yes, the, the answer is actually yes. Okay, so there's the last, last question. Uh, uh, yeah, just, just, sorry, just okay. I wanted to add uh, that you're still obliged to give uh, the uh, prior notice, okay? Just to make sure, sorry. So uh, I'm planning to take my vacation this coming May 2024. Uh, my employer offered me to pay 300 uh, per shekel per day in uh, 45 days. Instead, to pay the reliever, uh, it's affected my benefits or forfeited. Um. Well, actually, you have to go on vacation. <laughs> so uh, th this is what the uh, annual vacation law says. You you're not allowed to be paid for the vacation and not use it. You have to go on vacation. So uh, I'm not sure that this. Uh, um, um what what the employer is asking you is uh, right i understand it from uh, his uh, point of view that uh, he would like to be with someone he knows and not be with a reliever that he doesn't know uh, but i think it's good for you and also for him uh to to get some uh, um time off and uh, if you would like to use this uh, vacation then you should be able to again do it uh, in accordance with the employer uh, regarding the, the time that you're going. Uh, don't just uh, give it as a fact. Um, ask the employer if it's okay that you will do it on May. Uh, maybe it's better for him if you do it on August or I don't know. So so come to an agreement with your employment with the employer regarding the, the um, um, period of time. But but please go on vacation. Okay. So thank you very much.
Sherry. Sorry, sure. Oh, yeah. Just just a tasting. Um, but uh, again, here is all the information. You can go on our uh, Facebook uh, page or on, in our website. You can see uh, more information. And uh, just, you know, ask us and uh, we'll answer. It, it takes us uh, now a little bit more time than usual um, because uh, also of the emergency situation um, and uh, our staff is uh, uh, shorter and, and with a limited time frame. But please, please do write to us and we will get back to all of you. Okay, thank you and good evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you again, Rachel. Bye-bye.